Hello my school Ashra, welcome to my school YouTube channel and I am Frank. In today's video we shall be discussing about measurement of heat energy. But for the purpose of convenience, I have divided this topic into two parts. So today we will be looking at the first part while in subsequent video we will look at the second part. So do not go anywhere, relax and I will be right back. You are welcome back to my school youtube channel in today's video we shall be looking at the measurement of heat energy part one so before we begin with our lesson let's quickly run through the objective for today's lesson so objective a explain the relationship between the heat supplied to a substance and i its temperature change at constant mass and ii its mass at constant temperature change b explain the terms specific heat capacity and thermal capacity. C. Calculate unknown quantities using the relationship Q is equal to mc delta t when no change of state is involved. D. State the assumptions underlying the experiments involving the measurements of heat quantity. E. Solve simple problems involving latent heat. So let's begin with our lesson. So before we begin with our lesson proper, it's better for us to just do a little revision about heat. Okay, so heat energy is also known as thermal energy that flows due to temperature difference. Heat energy can be uh, used to do some work and can also be changed from one form to another. Okay, so the unit of heat energy is joule. The unit of heat energy is joule. When heat is applied to a substance, the temperature rises and when it is removed, the temperature falls. It has long been discovered that the quantity of heat received by a body is directly proportional to its mass, temperature change, and also on the nature of the material of which the body is made of. So in order to assess the quantity of heat energy possessed by a body, three quantities are needed. They are the change in temperature, the specific heat capacity of the body, and the mass of the body. So quantity of heat of a body is a product of the three quantities above as expressed by the equation below. So Q is equal to M where M stands for the mass of the body, C is the specific heat capacity of the body, Y delta theta means the change in temperature. Okay, so quantity of heat, it is measured in joule. So let's move to the next slide. So now let's talk about heat capacity. So heat capacity of a substance is simply defined as the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of the substance by one Kelvin. Okay, so heat capacity is measured in joules per Kelvin, right? So mathematically, heat capacity represented with Cp is equal to mass times specific heat capacity. Okay, so that heat capacity is equal to Mc, where M stands for the mass of the body, while C stands for the specific heat capacity of the body. Okay, so now if you know where that Cp, which is heat capacity, equals to Mc, and remember that in our previous formula for quantity of heat, okay, Mc also appeared here. We can simply replace Mc in our formula with Cp, so that the quantity of heat, okay, is equal to Mc delta theta, which is also equal to heat capacity times delta theta okay so let's talk about specific heat capacity why because heat capacity here that we've been talking about uh, since is simply about the entire mass of a body okay but when we say specific heat capacity simply we are referring to just a mass of that body let's say one kg okay so specific heat capacity of a substance is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of the substance through one degree change in temperature. So the quantity of heat Q received by a body is proportional to its mass M and temperature change and on the nature of the uh, material the body is made of. So let's move to the next slide. So mathematically, okay, so thus quantity of heat is equal to MC then delta theta, right? So delta theta simply stands for change in temperature, 
right? So that M is equals to mass, where M stands for the mass of the body, C stands for the specific heat capacity of the body, Y theta 2 stands for the final temperature, Y theta 1 stands for the initial temperature. So that theta 2 minus theta 1 represents the change in temperature. Okay, now C here is a constant of proportionality and it is called the specific heat capacity of the body and it depends on the nature of the body. So mathematically from here we can make C, which is the specific heat capacity of the body, the subject of formula. Okay, by simply dividing both sides by M, then change in temperature. Okay, so that C, which is the specific heat capacity of the body, is now equal to Q, which is the quantity of heat, divided by mass times change in temperature okay so the unit of specific heat capacity is joule per kilogram per kelvin okay from here we can actually get that so the unit of uh, q here which is the quantity of heat is joule while the unit of m here which is mass is kilogram why that of temperature is kelvin now since they are dividing so that is the reason why we have per okay so the unit of specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram per kelvin okay so let's see an example for example 500 gram of water is heated so that its temperature rises from 30 degrees celsius to 72 degrees celsius in seven minutes calculate the heat supplied per minute now we are given the specific heat capacity of water to be equal to 4200 joules per kilogram per second so let's move to the other slide to solve this problem. So the first thing first is to bring out the parameters that are given to you in the question. Okay, so mass of water was given to us in the question to be equal to 500 gram. But remember something, our specific heat capacity was given to us in joule per kilogram, right? But here the mass is given to us in gram. So there is need for us to convert that gram to kilogram. Okay, so if we convert 500 gram to kilogram, that will be equal to 0 0.5 kilogram. Okay, so initial temperature theta 1 is equal to 30 degrees Celsius, final temperature theta 2 is equal to 72 degrees Celsius. And of course, the specific heat capacity of water, which is given to us, is equal to 4200 joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Right, but remember that quantity of heat is given as mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. So if we substitute these parameters that are given to us into our formula will be having 0 0.5 times 4200 times the change in temperature which is 72 which is the final temperature minus the initial temperature which is 72 minus 30 so that at the end of the day we'll be having 0 0.5 times 4200 times 42 which is equal to 8200 joules okay now but the 88,200 joule is the total heat supplied in seven minutes, right? And the question did not say we should calculate for the total heat supply in seven minutes, but that we should calculate the total heat supply per minute, right? And we are told that this heat was supplied in seven minutes. So if we want to know the uh, quantity of heat supplied in one minute, okay? So that would be the total heat supply in seven minutes divided by seven. Okay, so that will be having 88,200 divided by 7 and that will be equal to 12,600 joule. Okay, so the specific heat capacity of a body can be determined using either the mixture method or the electrical method. So on the next slide, we discuss these methods one after the other. Okay, so determination of specific heat capacity by mixture method. So this is just a simple experiment. Okay, so a solid lead block is weighed on a balance to be MS. So this is subscript X actually. So but we'll just be using the word MS. Okay, it's weighed to be MX. Then a large calorimeter is dried and weighed to be MC. It is then reweighed to be MCW when half filled with water. Okay, then the initial temperature of the water is taken to be theta 1. The lead block is suspended in boiling water with a temperature theta 2, after which it is transferred to the calorimeter and the mixture stayed to maintain a uniform temperature theta 3. Now, you should um, note that calorimeter is the instrument used for measuring heat. Okay, so the specific heat capacity of the lead can be calculated using the fact that 
the heat lost by the lead, because the lead was actually suspended in hot water, then thereafter it was transferred into the calorimeter containing water at a lower temperature. Okay, so we can actually calculate the specific heat capacity of lead using the fact that heat lost by the lead is equal to heat gained by, by calorimeter and water, right? Now, given the specific heat capacity of solid, calorimeter, and water to be Cx, the specific heat capacity of the solid, Cc, specific heat capacity of calorimeter, and Cw, specific heat capacity of water. Okay, so heat loss by the lead is equal to heat gain by calorimeter and water. So mass of water is equal to MCW minus MC. Of course, the mass of the calorimeter and water is MCW, right? And we are looking for the mass of water. So what we simply do to get the mass of water is to subtract the mass of the calorimeter from the mass of the calorimeter and water. So that will give us the mass of water, okay? So that the mass of water is equal to MCW minus MC. The mass of calorimeter is equal to MC. Then the mass of solid is MX. Let's move to the next slide. So, putting all this together mathematically, we'll be having, this is the heat lost by the solid, okay, which is, of course, and what you must take note of is that everything about the measurement of heat energy is all about quantity of heat, okay? So, quantity of heat lost by the solid is given as ms, cs, then change in temperature is equals to the one gained by the calorimeter, the quantity of heat gained by the calorimeter, which is mc, cc, then change in temperature plus the one gained by water, the quantity of heat gained by water, which is CW, then in brackets, the mass of water, then times change in temperature. Okay, so we are going to be using this uh, formula to solve some problems. So let's begin with example one. When 100 gram of liquid L1 at 78 degrees Celsius was mixed with S gram of liquid L2 at 50 degrees Celsius. The final temperature was 66 degrees Celsius. Given that the specific heat capacity of L2 is half that of L1, find S. So let's go to the board to provide solution to this question. Okay, so solution. Of course, remember the first thing first is to write out the parameters that are given to us in the question. So the mass of L1 is equal to 100 gram, right? It's equal to 100 gram. The mass of L2 is equal to S gram, right? Then the temperature of L1, okay, the temperature of L1 is equal to 78 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of L2, the temperature of L2 equals to um, 50 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of the mixture, okay, the temperature of the mixture is equal to 66 degrees Celsius, right? So, um, we are asked to calculate the mass, okay, of L2. Now, remember the, um, the idea that we use in deriving that question, okay? Heat loss by the solid is equal to heat gain by the, uh, by the calorimeter plus the heat gain by water. So we are applying the same ideas here. So if you look at this question carefully, you discover that L1 is going to lose heat because it was mixed with L2, which is at a lower temperature, right? So L2 is going to gain heat while L1 will lose heat. So here we go, heat loss, heat loss by L1 is equal to heat gained by L2, right? It's equal to heat gained by L2, right? But remember, we are told that the specific heat capacity, okay, the specific heat capacity of L1 is equals to okay we are not given any value so let's say it is c and um, we are told that that of l2 is half of l1 so the specific heat capacity of l2 will be equals to 1 over 2 times c and that will be equals to c over 2 right now quantity of heat okay which is heat loss by l1 is given as q is equals to m c then data theta right so 
Okay, since we already know this, let's just substitute our formula and solve. So the heat loss by L1 will be equal to M. The mass of M is, the mass of this is 100, okay, times, of course, our C. Let me write this formula down. It will help us. M, then C, then data D. So this is what we are using to solve this question. So M for L1 is equal to 100 gram, then times the specific heat capacity of L1, which is C, times the change in temperature, which is 78, okay, minus 66. Why? Because L1 actually lost heat, okay? So for L2, of course, we don't know the mass. That is what we, we are asked to calculate for. So this will be X, then times, okay, let me use this, uh, times, let me use dot, so that both of them will not look alike. So times the specific heat capacity, which is C over 2, then times the gain in temperature, which is 66 minus 50. Okay? So this will be equal to 100 times C, then times, if we subtract this, this will be equal to 12. Okay? This will be equal to 12. Then here we'll be having X, then dot C over 2 times if we subtract this, this will be equal to uh, 16. Okay, this will be equal to 16. Now, just see here, just see here, so they will cancel out. So here we have a 1, and this one is also 1. Now, in order to uh, clear these two from this side, so we have to multiply both sides by 2. So that if we multiply here by 2, we'll be having 2 times 100 times 12 is equal to x times 16. Right now, we are looking for the value of S, so we simply make S the subject of formula by dividing both sides by the coefficient of x in this case, which is 16, so that x is equal to 2 times 100 times 12 divided by 16. So let's just, um, let's just reduce this. So 2 here is uh, 2 here is 8, 2 here is gone, 4 here is 2. Why 4 year is 3, why 2 year is 1, 2 year is 50, so that we are now having 50 times 3, and that is equal to 150 gram. Okay, 150 gram. Of course, depending if, for example, this is an objective question, okay, and your answer is given to you in kilogram, then you can simply convert this 115 gram to kilogram right but we leave it in kilogram because our l1 was given to us in kilogram okay so the answer to our number one example is 150 gram so this is where we put an end to the preview for today's video but you can watch a complete video by simply clicking on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website so in order for you to enjoy the complete video you have to subscribe right and in the complete video we continue with solving more examples we also discuss about the determination of specific heat capacity by electrical method and we also solve example we also talked about latent heat and some other concepts that are connected with um, measurement of heat energy i believe you enjoyed the preview of the video you have watched if yes please hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly put on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.